there are active attacks taking place right now that take advantage of a security flaw in the Microsoft Internet Explorer web browser. The security flaw exists in literally all the major versions of Internet Explorer, namely IE version 6 through 11. However, the active attempts to take advantage of it are centered around some of the more recent versions, namely IE 9 through IE 11. Uh, in other words, the attackers are just focusing on these versions, likely because they are the most lucrative versions to target for the specific purposes the attackers had in mind. Though the attackers could, in theory, at any point start expanding the scope of the attack to other versions, so keep in mind the risk is much broader than maybe what's actively taking place right now. What I'll do in this video is give you a high level flavor for how the attack works, and then I'll provide some information on additional resources as well as some best practices. So the way the attack works is as follows. Let's say you have an attacker, and we'll call her Alice. And what Alice will do is first set up a malicious web page, which we will uh, somewhat unimaginatively call exploit.html. And I'm merely giving it this name, exploit.html, for illustrative purposes. In real life, the attacker would choose maybe a less conspicuous name or maybe a less obvious sounding name, something that wouldn't uh, trigger a victim to get suspicious. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea. Alice will then try to use some type of trickery, typically an enticing email or some other type of social engineering ruse to trick a victim, and we'll call the victim in this case Victor, into visiting this dangerous web page using a vulnerable version of Internet Explorer. Now I'm sure you can imagine many ways by which a victim can be lured into visiting such a site by a crafty attacker like Alice. When Victor visits the exploit.html webpage, the page will contain instructions to load a flash SWF file, and we're going to call that file corrupt underscore heap dot SWF, corrupt underscore heap dot SWF. And again, this is an illustrative name, somewhat unimaginative as, as before, but hopefully gives you a flavor for what's going on. Now this corrupt underscore heap dot SWF file itself will mount a technique known as heap feng shui, heap feng shui. And this heap feng shui technique is an instance of another generic technique known as a heap spray, a heap spray. What happens in a heap feng shui attack is that a section of memory on Victor's computer, known in this case as the heap, is filled with malicious instructions by the attacker's code. Now the heap is simply just an area in a computer's memory that is used, let's say, by a Windows process. And it's just specifically used for things like objects that are allocated dynamically during the execution of a process. So for example, you may have a process associated with Internet Explorer that process is trying to use memory in different capacities during its execution. And it may need to allocate data structures, other types of objects in that process, and typically this dynamic allocation is handled on the heap, so to speak. And by the way, the technique that the attacker will be leveraging, this technique of heap feng shui is named that way because it's not possible to overwrite the heap contents in a willy-nilly fashion. Instead, it has to be done with a certain degree of care and precision. And so the term feng shui is being used to represent that need for care and precision. Now at this point, the heap only contains these malicious instructions. But for the attack to actually work, Alice has to somehow trick Victor's computer into actually executing and running those instructions. In other words, this heap feng shui isn't the attack itself, but you can think of it as a, a critical setup mechanism, a precursor, if you will, that sets the stage for the rest of the attack. Now for this next step, the attacker Alice takes advantage of a vulnerability in Internet Explorer known as a use after free vulnerability. What this type of vulnerability entails is a situation where a process, in this case, a process associated with Internet Explorer, uses some object, frees the object, and then tries accidentally to reuse it. Normally, once an object is freed, it's not supposed to be reused. If it's reused, then the attacker can take advantage of this by the heap feng shui technique that I mentioned earlier, since the process in question will start to look to the heap when trying to use this recently freed object. And in that case, when it starts to look into the heap, it's literally going to fall right into the attacker's trap that they've set up. 
Once the attacker has the requisite control, he can do a whole host of nefarious things on the victim's computer. The most notable thing the attacker can do is to drop a piece of malicious software or malware onto the victim's computer. And this malware running inside the victim's computer can allow the attacker to gain essentially carte blanche access to the system for future use. So there is a ton of information I've left out in the interest of time, as well as to avoid uh, getting bogged down into some of the low level details. But I do want to close this video out at least with some best practices and, and future resources. Uh, so first of all, this vulnerability is not patched as of yet. So your options are that you can disable flash, which will at least stop attempts to take advantage of the vulnerability. Uh, second, you can enable something known as enhanced protection mode, enhanced protection mode in Internet Explorer. And this enhanced protection mode basically helps to mitigate the attack. Another vehicle besides enhanced protection mode is the enhanced mitigation experience toolkit, also known as EMET or EMET. A third option to consider is using a different web browser altogether, something other than Internet Explorer for the time being until a patch is made available. I also want to stress two things that don't work here. First of all, there is a technique known as data execution protection, also known as DEP. Uh, there's also a technique known as address space layout randomization or ASLR. These techniques are useful in other security contexts, but it turns out that the way this particular attack is carried out the approaches mentioned, DEP and ASLR, don't actually work in protecting against this type of particular attack. Uh, one more implication I think it's worth mentioning as well is that recently Microsoft stopped supporting Windows XP. So users who are currently on XP may have even fewer options since they will not be able to upgrade their computers in a way that fixes the flaw in question. There will be no more upgrades for Windows XP. So those users are out of luck in that capacity. They may have to switch to another browser or maybe consider uh, trying to enable some of these modes for the time being. So for more details, you can see Microsoft's security advisory. The number is 2963983. Uh, you can also search under the Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures Database, or CVE. Just search for the CV number 2014-1776. Then FireEye, who actually was the company that reported exploitation of this vulnerability to Microsoft, they have a blog entry, which is worth reading. It's got a lot of additional technical details. And if you are interested in this particular heap feng shui technique, there is a really nice presentation given by Ivan Sotorov. Uh, the presentation was given at Black Hat in Europe in 2007, and it does go into some of the lower level mechanics.